Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. Today our federal government, the Bundestag, voted on several proposals to make it mandatory for different groups of people to have a certain pharmaceutical concoction injected into their bodies. If they would in the future at some point fail to produce proof of said procedure, they would be fined and if they didn't want to pay the fine, they would go to jail. That was what they were planning. But today all the proposals were rejected by the Bundestag and I want to explain this to you and put it into perspective because on first glance it looks like good news but it really isn't. Of course it is great and uh, don't get me wrong I also was glad that they didn't vote on these horrible proposals but the reason for it is not that they disagree with it. It is a different reason and I will explain that in today's video so that you know what is going on in Germany and also there is a small number of people who don't necessarily speak German that well but who reside in Germany and who are listening to my podcast and maybe for them it is also interesting and useful background information. But first a big shout out to all my supporters and my subscribers. Thank you so much. You should also check me out on other social media platforms if you haven't done so already. And if you feel like it, you can support me via Patreon or Subscribestar. Okay, let's start with the facts as always. I have to remind you that our parliament is gigantic. It is the biggest parliament on the globe, um, only uh, I think second to the Volkskammer or the People's Congress in China. So the Bundestag has over 700 MPs and that is just the federal parliament. We have state parliament, 16 state parliaments on top of that of course and Germany is a relatively small country. Okay, with this out of the way, just so that you understand the numbers. Let's start with the most drastic proposal and uh, that was uh, in large put forward by the MPs or by several MPs of the ruling coalition. I said before that um, the coalition, so the government, they didn't really put out a government proposal because of course, I said before, they wanted to have insurance in case it all blows up into their faces and that is what happened now. So now the chancellor can say, hey, well, it wasn't my proposal, it was just self-organized groups of MPs. Anyway, so the most radical proposal was that there would have been a mandate for all people residing in Germany, not just Germans, also the foreigners, all people residing in Germany from the age of 60 and everybody over the age of 18 would have to um, appear to some kind of mandatory counseling session with some kind of health official that tries to talk them into accepting this pharmaceutical product which is pretty totalitarian if you ask me. It's like um, something that the Catholic Church could have come up with in the 15th century or something. Anyway, so the article that I have in front of me right now of the newspaper Die Zeit says that 296 out of 683 MPs voted in favor of it and 378 voted against this proposal. Then the second proposal was coming from the corner of the conservatives, the CDU, CSU, the fake conservatives or conservatives in name only. And what they wanted is they wanted some kind of a VAX registry and then if necessary later they could vote again for some kind of mandate for some kind of mandatory jab then in autumn for example. And that was also rejected. There were only 172 MPs that voted in favor of that. And then there is a guy from the Liberal Party who also had a multi-party um, group that suggested that there shouldn't be any vax mandate and only 85 MPs voted in favor of that. And uh, remember, that was a proposal that said there shouldn't be any general vax mandate. However, it didn't challenge the mandate that we already have in Germany and that is for workers in the health sector. This is what we have already. And the AFD was the only party that positioned itself clearly against all of these jab mandates and they also said that um, this health worker mandate should be um, cancelled, that should be discontinued ASAP and of course nobody voted for that either. Well, except for the AFD, I guess. 
So that means that for the time being, nothing changed. Um, as of now, we still have the mandates for health sector workers and we don't have general mandates um, for anybody really. So in the beginning, they wanted to make it from the age of 50 and now they said mm, maybe 60 has more probability of passing, but not even that did pass. So what do I make out of this? How do I explain this? How do I put that into perspective? Is that a good thing now? But you already saw that um, only 85 uh, MPs voted um, in favor of not having any mandates and even less, I think, voted for the AFD's uh, proposal, which is maybe clear because nobody dares to vote in favor of the AFD from the other mainstream bloc parties. But um, what does that mean? That means that these proposals were not rejected because a majority of our uh, federal parliament thinks that we don't need these mandates. These proposals were rejected because um, for some people it didn't go far enough or some people didn't want to agree with the um, yeah, with the ruling majority, with the government, which more or less the first proposal was. And I have to say that the CDU, at least some speakers, I think they said that, well, we don't really know what kind of variants will be around um, in autumn. So it doesn't make sense to um, give people something that was developed based on the variant that we had in 2020. And we don't even know what's going to come up. Um, we all know this principle from the uh, flu shots. Um, there is also a whole process involved in trying to model and figure out what kind of flu variants will be predominantly going around in Europe, for example, in the fall when people can get their flu shots. So we don't know anything about that. So it doesn't make sense. And even for the current variants, it really doesn't help so much. But let me tell you once again, these parliamentarians there, except for the AFD, they are in favor of vax mandates. And sooner or later, we will get them. This today did not happen because they disagree with that or they think that it should be people's private personal decision or something like that. It's a medical decision. It's what they do with their body and that should be between them and their doctor. No, no, no. They think we need to force people and uh, they will get this done sooner or later unless the people really show more resistance and really show them that there will be consequences, there will be resistance, or people will just ignore these mandates should they become law and just pay the fines or not pay the fines or go to jail for a month or I don't know. So we've seen in Germany, for example, that the mask mandates were dropped on a federal basis at least uh, I think last weekend or something but you still see a lot of people running around with masks even though they don't have to and um, the politicians already said that um, certain venues or stores or supermarkets what have you that they can um, impose mask mandates for their shop if they want to um, it doesn't need to come from politicians and maybe they will do that with that too uh, maybe certain uh, stores or certain venues, they will just require um, some uh, proof of um, pharmaceutical products in your blood or in your system. Otherwise, you cannot enter. Um, that might be the way to go now in Germany for the next uh, time, for the foreseeable future. But I'm sure that they will try to make this mandatory because in my opinion they clearly have an understanding they clearly have a deal with the pharmaceutical industry and they bought all this crap and now they want to get rid of it and uh, they don't want to dump it but they want to administer all these doses to the good people of Germany of course so that the pharmaceutical industry makes a lot of money also in the future and they can sell these products that can be produced used under ridiculous circumstances that are not up to the standard of the general industry. They do not have to be produced by knowledgeable or trained people and uh, they don't have to be properly approved and the uh, companies, they, they, they are not liable for any damages and so on. So this is a gold mine for them. They can just um, throw everything on the market that they want and the governments with taxpayers' money pay for it and that is what they always 
always wanted and now they have it. So of course their um, agents, um, the politicians, will try to make this possible. They will try to get this through. This is my personal opinion, but uh, they already said so. Um, the health minister of Germany that you can see on all these wonderful pictures, Mr. Lauterbach, uh, yeah, he said that uh, he will not give up to fight for this and this was just one failed attempt and I will be back, you cannot stop me, like in a weird um, Saturday morning children's cartoon, like the, the evil guy at the end of the episode says, you haven't defeated me, I will be back and then I will, yeah, I mean... Pretty much he said that he will try again. All right, so I hope that you are in the know now. For the time being, uh, we don't have any changes when it comes to mandates, to jab mandates here in Germany. We still have the old ones. And um, as I said, it's not because our parliamentarians, our MPs don't think we need these mandates. It's because of other reasons that it didn't happen this time. But at least it is a little bit of Good news for the time being. So long. Servus, Kameraden.